I chose the name The Last Bookstore because at the time Borders was going out of business and a lot of other little bookstores were going out of business and it was just in the news a lot. There's press about books going away and you know, ebooks taking over, but people just don't like to lose something that they've loved for centuries. I think that the digital age has made print books more popular in a weird way. It's just made everyone come out of the woodwork who really wants to see books survive. And it's created quite a bit of loyalty, I think, among people who really love books. Some people prefer physical, tactile objects, and some people prefer clicking a button and having something instantaneously. There's room for both, I think. I hope. Shoes on. Let's do it. My name is Josh Spencer. I own the last bookstore, and I'm a father and a husband and a paraplegic. Before my injury, I was really active. You know, I surfed and lifted weights and played volleyball and hiked, and you know, I was very outdoorsy. I was riding a moped and got hit by a car, and I was in the hospital for like three months. They did spinal surgery, so you can't really move after that, and I had a broken pelvis and collapsed lung and broken shoulder and skin ripped off my, my whole hand. So yeah, there was definitely years of struggling with that and crying that out and trying to figure out how can I still be a man when I'm half paralyzed and how can I succeed in this world and how can I have a family if I want that. I just coming to terms with all these things, it took quite a few years. I went through depression. Um, just everything was a challenge, everything was difficult. You know, I had, to, I had to really learn how to readjust my mind and change my perception so that things that seem difficult wasn't necessarily harder, it was just different, so. It took a decade, I guess, for me to, to readjust. Mm -hmm. We have one daughter named Eden. She's a handful. Uh, and she's super smart, she's already super creative. Mm-hmm, you're making a mess. So I think she's just uh, showing off how much she can eat. <laughs> she loves reading books, you know. She's still at the board book, pop-up book stage, but Heidi reads to her every night. Hopefully we can instill a love of reading in her as she gets older. I'm a bookseller. People expect our child to be more literate. I don't really care what other people think, so I'm not going to try to make her a bookworm if she doesn't want to be. At the warehouse, we sort everything that comes in through big buys that we do or donations. People selling books through the store, we get a lot of inventory that way. People's personal libraries, you know, when they pass away or when they move, when they're just downsizing for whatever reason. It seems like people are always selling books and always donating books, so it keeps us pretty busy. LA Earthquake source book. This will be useful one day. So right now I'm sorting books into various categories, um, things that would go directly to the store, things that we're just gonna box up. When I first started, there wasn't any technology, you know, you didn't have smartphones, there wasn't databases you could download with information. So I had to know all this stuff kind of 
just by feel and by heart. I've been doing this for so long, like I can tell in a split second if something's too damaged for anybody to buy. We'll keep a lot of books on hand just to send to hospitals and schools and whatnot. It's kind of a fantasy job for anybody that's really in love with all different kinds of books and loves finding buried treasure. I found 500 bucks one time, weird love letters, a pressed pot leaf and a Song of Solomon book one time. And I don't know if it's used, but like toilet paper and, you know, I hate it when people use toilet paper for bookmark. It's the worst. Somebody's got a photocopied cover of Harry Potter. I noticed that. It's like their own custom made uh, Kinko's dust jacket. <laughs> it's not even on that book. It's on uh, the miracle of cosmetic plastic surgery. So they wanted somebody to think they were reading yeah, Harry right. Potter. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> you see all kinds of weird stuff like that here. Like, who are these people that, you know, do that? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's cool. You never know what to expect. It's a treasure hunt. Not just the books themselves, but what's inside, yeah. This guy works here. We found this in a box, actually. This is a headshot. We got a donation of books, and this picture was in a box. And he works here. And he works here, yeah. And he wasn't here that day. We opened up the box, and that was sitting right on top. And we were like, oh my god. What's the chances of that? My name is Emil, and I'm the warehouse foreman here. You look at a stack of books like this, that's almost 200 boxes of books, and you figure there's 20 books in each box. And you do the math, there's hundreds of thousands of books in here. No, the stacks never get smaller. It just keeps growing and growing and growing in here. It's unbelievable. Like, to organize this place, it's, it, it's, it's a lot of work. So. Um, you want to go back around and go through this way. Yeah, it's like a maze. I used to work at Book Soup for four years before I came here. It was a good place to work when I first started there. They got bought by another company called Romans in Pasadena, and it became a little more corporate. All these like independent stores started, they just started going down. Even the, the big, you know, conglomerate started going down as well. So for Josh to like start a bookstore in this day and age, it took a lot of guts, you know what I mean? And he started it from the ground up and, you know, made a good place for people to work. And I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm like really happy here. So <clears throat> it's a good experience, a good job. I just love dealing with books. You know, why wouldn't you want to work with something that you love? If I didn't make any money at all, I'd want to do this. It's sort of a hobby that turned into a business and became a little bit of an obsession and I just enjoy it. So it doesn't feel like work to me. And that's, that's always the best kind of job, right? When you just feel like you're having fun and it's like what you would do as a hobby anyway, so. <laughs> I moved to Los Angeles in 2002, I think, shortly after my parents divorced and my girlfriend broke up with me. I had torn my bicep like the year before and I had, had like an internet magazine covering film and music and that sort of tanked. I tried to get a job a few places but nobody would really hire me and so I just, uh, I lived on welfare and food stamps and I had sort of an early like midlife crisis where I was just like, man, I'm a loser. I'm not doing anything with my life. I gotta get serious about this. I gotta find something that that I can really focus on and really love and really get behind. You know, I'd always been a writer and a reader. And so I thought, well, I'll try books. eBay was just getting started, so I had learned how to use that. So I started doing that just from my apartment, um, this tiny little studio apartment. Uh, but this one guy that, that I knew, this friend of mine, he kept hassling me to open up a store for a couple of years, really. <laughs> until finally I relented and was like, all right, there's, there's a space open up across the street from where I live. And it was busy from the first day we opened our doors. I created this place as, as somewhere that I would want to hang out all the time, you know, as like a huge living room for me. So uh, it seemed to have worked for a lot of other people too. So they, they kind of see it as their, their home away from home too, you know. I definitely think the bookstore has changed other people's lives. It's definitely become a refuge for a lot of people. Regardless of whether they like books or not, it's a place they come and hang out. Some of them are huge book lovers, so it's sort of rejuvenated their, their you know, ability to access books easily. Um, people who love books and love to read and love to hoard books and love to collect books and 
Uh, it's definitely, I think, changed their lives because they come here every single day. So whatever they were doing before every single day, they're not doing that anymore. We've tried to add a, a real human element. We want it to be an authentic, real experience versus something that's cold and calculated. I think that's the difference. I think that's one reason why we've been able to do well when other bookstores perhaps are struggling. In the beginning, I really did just think, okay, I'm just gonna do this sort of art project bookstore. It might last two or three years and then it's gonna fail because the book business is gonna be done and that'll be it. But after my injury, my life perspective definitely changed in terms of just learning to look at everything as a challenge, not be afraid of failure. I've lost things in my life much more traumatic than a business. There's not much that could compete with that, you know. <laughs> There's a, you know, if I can deal with that, I could certainly deal with a business failing. It's no big deal. So, yeah, no fear. <laughs>